welcome back to Intro to Web Development, Lambda School students. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to be talking about objects. This is going to be a follow-up to our arrays lessons. Uh, object is an, another data structure uh, similar to an array, but with its own unique constraints and, and uh, pros to it. Uh, so, uh, in the last lesson, we learned um, about arrays, and we learned about data structures in general. Uh, we learned that <clears throat> arrays uh, are able to hold multiple pieces of data, right? Big collections. We call them a, we call it a collection of data, and and oftentimes uh, the that collection of data that data is related to each other. Uh, for example, the types of cars or our friends, as we saw, uh, they tend to be pieces of data that are related to each other uh, in some way, uh, but unique to themselves. Objects, on the other hand, uh, are also a way to store uh, multiple pieces of data. Um, but in an object, we tend to hold uh, a lot of data about one thing. So in, in that example, types of cars, uh, let's say brands of cars, uh, and an object would be, um, you know, maybe maybe go back to types of cars and, and it's a truck. And an object would be like, okay, engine uh, size or passengers, etc. It would be a lot of things about one piece of data. Uh, and in this example, we say username, password, and email for one user, right? Um, this is kind of a general way of thinking about it. Um, this is definitely not a steadfast rule. Uh, we can put whatever data we want in an object, but this is kind of how we think about objects. Uh, you might encounter objects or arrays that don't follow these rules in the wild. Uh, so, so keep that in mind. There's nothing holding us back from doing anything, but if we if we use objects and arrays in this meth style, then we're gonna uh, see some good results from it. So you're like, okay, cool, what's an object? Where is it at? Um, first thing we're gonna talk about with an object is what's known as a key value pair. Uh, so in the last video, we learned that we can access and assign items in an array using a numerical index. Remember that index was unique to that item in the array. Uh, those indexes went in order. That, I said that was a really awesome, unique thing about arrays is that ma they maintain order. Uh, and we, if you remember back, uh, what does the first item in an array, what is its index? I hope you thought zero or said zero because it's always a zero-based index in an array. Um, <clears throat> so that's how we, we do things in an array. We kind of do the same thing in an object, except in for objects, we get to name the index. We get to name it, and this is known as a key. Uh, one kind of downside to an object is that items are not guaranteed to be in order, whereas in an array, they are guaranteed to be in order. But an upside in an object is that we get to name the key. We can name that key zero if we want. We can name that key supercalifragilisticexpialidocious if we want. We can name it whatever we want. It's known as a key uh, in an object, not an index. Uh, in an array, the index points to a piece of data. Same thing happens in an object. Um, the key is going to point to a piece of data and we call that the value. So this is where we get that key value pair. Uh, the key is the, the, the pointer, the value is the value we want. So that's the string or the number or the Boolean or the array or object or whatever you want in there. Uh, each key, this is important, uh, just like in an array, each key in an object is unique has to be unique. Um, the value doesn't need to be though. We can have you know 75 unique keys and they all have the same exact value. That's fine. Just like in an array, we can put 75 strings of Dan in there and each of them would have their own index, right? You know, there's never going to be two number one indexes in an array. Same thing in an object. Each key is unique. Um, there's going to be one key pointing to one piece of data. Okay, so that's also important to note. Uh, so, you know, you're like, oh cool, key value pairs. I don't even know what an object looks like yet. Let's check it out. Uh, so, this is how we create an array. Very simply, this is how we create an object. So notice that an object is the same exact keys on your keyboard that you use to create an array, you just shift. Uh, this is known as a curly braces, whereas the, the top an array is, we call it square brackets. Uh, the object is known as curly braces. And when you give um, 
JavaScript, these curly braces, it automatically says, oh, you're creating an object. And so it's a little bit different looking uh, than an array, but kind of follows the similar style. Um, <clears throat> whereas in an array, we just write the value into the array and the array does everything for us. In an object, we have to create that key. Uh, so we can call that key whatever we want. Remember, it can be called key, it could be called name, it could be called password, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be um, the key. The value is going to be whatever data type we want to set the value to. So let's walk through this for a second. First, we have those curly braces. Okay, that tells JavaScript that we're creating an object. Then we have the key. All right, we call this, we can name this key, we can call it whatever we want. It doesn't have to be this numerical order or anything. <clears throat> uh, we then have our value. So the value is gonna be the string or the number or the Boolean that we wanna set it to. And you'll notice that we use a colon to separate the two, the key and the value. Okay, this is really important uh, to separate the key and the value. Uh, and we can include as many key value pairs as we want in an object. And just like in an array, they have to be separated by a comma. So you'll see these commas are always gonna separate uh, the key value pairs. And you know, notice that we have five different keys and they're all uniquely named, key, key one, two, three, four. And notice that we have five values and they're all the same value. Uh, we can do this, this is fine, but we have to have unique keys. So uh, let's write our own object out. All right, so uh, like I said, let's create a user object. It's gonna have a username, a password, and an email. Uh, remember that if we wanted to include something like this for an array, we say, and this doesn't really tell us much though. If I said username, our username is going to be, um, let's just say my name. Uh, password is gonna be the ultra secure password of ABC123. And I'll give you my email. So this doesn't really tell us a whole lot about this data, does it? It's, you know, sitting in this array. I don't know, is this the password? Is this the password? Is this the username? Is that the email? There's a dot in there. So in an object, we get to give a little bit more information about the data that we're, we're supplying. So let's transform this. And this is kind of doing it like this and separating these lines. Um, is not required, but this kind of convention, uh, and you'll see this very often in JavaScript. Uh, so what's the first thing we'll do? Let's say we wanna create a username. So we have to create the key first, and let's just call it username. Look at that, we just call it username. Uh, remember, this could be anything we want. We give it a colon, and then we give it the data that we want. So let's go Dan Frainer. Boom, we've created our first object. Let's go in and console log this. Look at that. We have an object with the username key and Dan Frainer as the, um, as the uh, value. Uh, let's go in and create some more. Next thing we're gonna wanna create is the password. Let's call it password. Remember this can be called password jiggly Puff, something, we can call this whatever we want, okay? We're naming it now. We're not making the computer name it as in the array, we're gonna name it. Uh, and we're gonna call this ABC123, don't steal my password at anyone. And look, I made sure that I separated by a comma, just like in our last lesson, uh, where array items have to be separated by a comma, objects have to, key value pairs have to be separated by a comma as well. I guarantee that every single one of you uh, is going to run into an issue where you forgot the comma and you're gonna see some real crazy error like this. Um, it's because you need that comma in there. All right, and then now look, we have our object here with username key of Dan Frainer string, uh, password key of ABC123 as the string. Uh, and one more thing, let's go email of, oh, 
dan at lambda school. All right, let's see if we run this, what issue we're gonna have, if we're gonna have anything. Can you see something wrong with this object right now? I'll give you a second to look it over. If you said that we were missing a comma, you are correct. So now we have an object. Let's now talk about how we are able to um, access uh, and uh, manipulate and, and assign items in objects. So just like an array, we can use the um, bracket notation. This is known as bracket notation. It is pretty rare to see this used on an object because if we use this like this, we have to actually include a string of the key we want. Okay, it has to be a string in here. Uh, we'll oftentimes see this used uh, with variables because you can just put a variable that equals a string, uh, but it has to be a string in here. So let's run that and we'll see that the string we have accessed that item. Objects have something really cool and it may be pretty familiar to you, but it's known as dot notation. So if we use dot notation, we can just type the name of the key out without quotes around it. And you'll see it operates exactly the same. Okay. The difference between bracket notation, remember that bracket notation requires a string as the key. So if we go user, username. And there's a very specific reason for this. I don't really want to get too deep into it right now, but it requires a string in there. Um, whereas dot, um, only needs the name of the key. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, for 99.9% .9 of object use, you're going to see dot notation, right? And so this is how we access um, a key or the value, excuse me, on the object is we give it the name of the object, we say dot, and we give it the name of the key. And then we can get the value, abc123. So think back to our array method uh, or our array lectures. Um, and how did we change items in an array? Uh, how did we reassign items? Give you a moment to think. And if you said use the assignment operator or the equal sign, you are correct. So just like in an array, we can change items in an object. Let's go. Uh, oh, someone hacked our password and now we need to change it. Three, two, one, CBA. Oh, that's much more secure, right? And let's go console log the user and we'll see now that our new password is in there. So you can use bracket notation in an, ob in an object. Just a reminder, you have to use a string in there okay or a variable that points to a string so if i had a variable what like this i can use that in there because it points to a string all right we're not going to get super deep into this but just know the difference between the two um, we can do that bracket notation is really only used if we have a variable and we don't know what that string is. Uh, that's not gonna be the case in, the, in any of these lessons for us. So bracket notation has to use a string. Dot notation, don't ever do this because that doesn't work either. All right, uh, so dot notation, you can't use a string. You have to use just the name of the key. Uh, so that's how we build an object, that is how we assign items in an object, uh, and that's how we uh, access items in an object. One more thing before we go, uh, we didn't really talk about this in an array because we had methods and stuff for doing that, uh, but in an object, how can we add items, key value pairs to the object? Sure, you can go in here and add another key value pair, location, USA, right? Or, what we could do is we can actually add them after the fact by using our assignment operator. Uh, 
And now look, we have the location of USA. So we can add whatever key value pairs we want. So if the key doesn't exist in the object, it will add it for us. If the key does exist in the object, it will change it. Okay, that's how we can add and assign uh, different I key value pairs to objects. Just remember that your keys have to be unique. If you try to overwrite a key with another key, it's just going to change it to whatever the latest value is. So just keep that in mind. Keys have to be unique in objects. Um, so this is your introduction to objects. Uh, we're going to work with them a lot more. You'll see at the end of the next lecture why. Uh, but uh, I hope you've gotten a lot out of it, and I'll see you in the next video.